Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Career Chronicles. This is Aishwarya Subakar. Today, we have Sharinath, who is working in Mercedes Benz as a senior engineer. So I'm highly excited to know about his journey, some tips and strategies in order to get into Mercedes Benz. On the other part, uh, so how are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. What about you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Cool. So yeah, I hope we can start up with an introduction from your side. Yes, sure, sure. So as you know, um, right now I'm working at, at Mercedes-Benz R&D India. So it's located in Bangalore. And um, I think it will be around approximately five years since I began working there. So I've been working since 2018. And I'll come to the details of my job soon, I guess. But I'll just give you a, a small highlight. So I did my master's in automotive engineering from Jadhav University. And prior to that, I did, I did, my, I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from VIT University. That's cool. just a little bit about myself, but I will discuss more about what I am doing in more detail, I think, in, 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 in the upcoming questions. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So you have already been a part of um, mechanical engineering and automobile. You already had this thing of getting into engineer, I mean, the engineer role, or it was just a random part? So, I mean, at that age, um, I mean, in my opinion, I did not have a lot of choices. I mean, I had taken up science in my class 12. And to me, the I just went with this. I went with the topic which I liked the most. I liked this and math, so I just went with that. So, I mean, I didn't at that time, I didn't realize how much of an impact it would create. But yeah, down the road, it had a, it, it, that is like where everything started out. But yeah, that's how I started off. I mean, it was not exactly a very thought of uh, like it wasn't it wasn't really well thought that I was 18 at that time. I was not like exposed to like what like uh, I would I really had no idea like how 10 15 years down the line how things would actually mm -hmm. it would turn up so yeah that's how I, I I took up engineering at the time yeah got it so uh though your designation is like engineer so many people I mean I'm a computer science student so I really don't know what uh, an engineer does at my I mean uh Mercedes Benz so uh what would be the uh, main role and responsibility of an engineer in a typical day. Okay, so I mean, if you're asking what are what are typical engineers at Mercedes Benz, you will get you uh, probably every person is going, is going to give you uh, like the answer is going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. So I can give you my perspective, like what I do, and yeah. from there I can maybe expand a little bit to what what others what others um, what what what. Um, what they might do because i am i again i will not say like exactly this is what they do so yeah. for me personally i am i'm an integration engineer mm -hmm. so um first of all what what is what does that mean that that's a question obviously so like i'm sure you know like um, in like uh, in the case of a car you have you, you have the actual hardware then you have then you have then you have something which is called the controller right so that mm -hmm. controller basically has a software so my job is to is to make sure that the that our that uh, that the that the hardware the yeah the hardware and the model model they are uh, sorry the hardware and the software they are properly integrated. Mm -hmm. So that has been my role all the all this time. The only thing the thing which has changed is the number of projects. And of course, as the projects have changed, so has so has the complexity. So I I also work on, on like. This is the overall, overall, uh, to say, overall uh, overview of this entire thing. So, if you go a little more in detail, so I work in the hardware in hardware in loop simulation. Mm -hmm. That is basically where I have to create a kind of simulate a kind of simulation of 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 the hardware, and I have to integrate that with the software. So, most of my work it revolves around that. Like on a daily basis, that's what I do generally. I either work on the hardware in loop system or on the module itself or that is mostly what I do. So now I specifically work on the transmission side. So uh, now there are a lot of people who work on the engine side. There are people who work on the battery, who work on the charge, who work on the inverter, and so on. So this, so again, now now if you combine all of this, this is I said transmission, inverter, battery. This all comes comes under the powertrain segment, mm -hmm. right? Now if you expand a little bit more, you will see that powertrain is only one part of the car. You have so many other systems. You have the entire you have, you have the ADAS, which is the automatic driving automatic system. Again, please don't quote me on on the full form. Like 
uh, ADS is the as the abbreviation. You can mm -hmm. check it out. So that is more in, involved in in the uh, in the uh, automatization of the car, like whether the the drive car will be able to drive on its own. Then you also have the infotainment system. So then you have all the microcontroller, all the sensors of the car. So you have a lot of these a lot of these subdivisions. Everyone, what everyone does is pretty unique in that respect. So one of my, some of my friends, like some people who joined with me at, at, at or, um, over there, so they worked on 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 the ADS actually. Mm -hmm. So there, so some of them also also they had a similar role. They were on the hardware and loop, but but for the ADS, they had their own uh, they had their own separate models. They had to integrate it on their own, and some are also involved more in on the in making the software also. So yeah, a lot of things. So if you ask what an engineer does, they they will do from A to Z. In my case, I I, I do like I am this in that in the part of um, I am specifically involved in integration. Any someone might be involved in something else again. Yeah, got it. Good. So Miss, uh, my next question is like, what are the tools and technologies that you use at Messi? Like the latest thing, latest tools. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, if when you when you say to the technologies, do you mean what tools what tools are used by us on a daily basis, or what are we kind of kind of developing or on the like daily other? basis? On the daily basis. Okay. So, on a daily basis, I mean, mostly, um, I think I think you've heard of it probably. So, we use, we use this tool called MATLAB. Mm, yeah. I think you've heard of it. So, okay. MATLAB is predominantly used. Now with MATLAB, you have a lot of uh, a, lo a lot of a lot of features. For example, Simulink is there. Mm -hmm. Then you then you have, then we have, you have something called Simscape, and sometimes we also use a tool called Xylos. Mm -hmm. So these are the tools which we use. But overall, like in my my responsibility, MATLAB is the tool which we use the most mm -hmm. because over there we have to develop the models, and then we have to uh, we have, we have to we have to integrate them. So we have to make them such that it can be integrated. So all that is done in MATLAB itself, yeah. and of course, of course, um, we we did obviously use uh, all all the products of Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, and all that. That that it goes without saying. But yeah, MATLAB is something we definitely use. For others, like other pro projects, they use yeah, they use a lot of different tools actually. Mm -hmm. so I'm not exactly aware of that, but we use MATLAB on a daily basis, you could say. Got it. Okay. So, um, how to stay updated uh, in the part of uh, uh, engineering, basically, since you have this designation called engineering, a person who's uh, in the field of engineering, how does the person should stay updated? What are the tips that you would give to a person? Like maybe how you stay updated in the field of engineering? Okay. So, two separators you have to like the first i think the basic thing to stay updated is to is, is to have is to have that um, is to have the curiosity to actually know that is of course it goes without saying on top of that so there are a lot of websites where you can actually if you apply to them they they will give you kind of like um, they'll give you a kind of weekly mail so i have actually done that i have subscribed to a lot of websites so i get like a, a, a weekly and a monthly mail like it will just give it will just say like these are uh, what is happening these are what is happening in the automotive world, and also, of course, I will. So, what I what I also try to do is, I on, on my personal phone, I try to optimize whatever search results, so I get like what is happening. Because outside of automotive, I also would like to know how much is happening in the world in terms of mm -hmm. in terms of business, in terms of finance, in terms of AI or whatever. So that is what I do. So there are a lot of these websites which are there, which gives you an idea. And also, like internally, also like, we get like these. Uh, we also get these monthly and also weekly mails, like saying like what are the patents or uh, any other kind or any kind of innovation which has happened in the company. Mm -hmm. So that is how I stay up to date. Yeah. Okay. So would you suggest any course of certification not to get this engineer part? So. Um, if you ask for some certifications, then I would rec definitely recommend like um, for someone who is not into the into the field of computer science, if they can do a few small certifications either on the cloud or with related with related to AI, it would be extremely helpful. And um, some courses um, for some for anyone who is from the mechanical 
the background definitely if they do courses um, but pertain to mechatronics or something related to controllers it would be very helpful because um, or or and and especially if if they can learn any kind of computer language in this case i have i i had to learn python so mm -hmm. so it's, it's really helpful it goes a long way because because the ultimately the objective is to be kind of is to know is to have is to have one strong skill and a lot of and a, a lot of small skills for my case like uh, since i am a mechanical engineer i had to learn i had to learn uh, a lot about controllers a lot about the elect electrical engineering a lot about uh, also a lot, also a lot of python so had to do all this so if you can somehow do a separate course in your college or or in your free time it will be really helpful it will go a long way got it so uh, like is it easy for a fresher uh, to get into mercedes benz um uh, in the role of i mean in the designation part of engineer so generally must mercedes benz does hires mostly those who have done a masters actually so but there is a scope like if you apply as a fresher like uh, after your btech or after your be so you can apply um, uh, you can apply for an internship actually mm -hmm. this is possible so that is possible definitely to apply for and the most like when you are when anyone does apply of course like this is the case for everybody like you can't know everything so like what what i would like my tip would be that like um, if you are applying and if you do land an interview then be as open minded as you can mm -hmm. during the during the interview or during the call whatever mm -hmm. but it's definitely possible like if you apply for an internship it is possible but if you apply directly for a full time job then it's, they might say no but again they might say yes or so i'm not really sure but for internship it's it's it is definitely possible cool correct so to be honest you answered all my questions thank you so much thank you for accepting the chronicles invitation so guys if you want to get to know more about this kind of uh, sessions kindly subscribe to career chronicles comment and share thank you so much